Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be first off looking at a couple spoilers that have come out the last two days, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over one of Pudding Tom's games that was streamed at the Colleen Phuket against the Prism. I wanted to show off, arguably, I don't think it's arguably, I, I think it's the best Katsu player in the world. Definitely the most accomplished Katsu player in the world, in my opinion. Uh, both now with a calling top eight and a world's top eight on Katsu and just kind of show a master class on how to play that hero and I'm going to be in all a little bit we'll talk about the play lines and just have some fun with it but I want to show two of the spoiler cards first today uh, these cards like I just want to say regardless if they're playable or not you're right because there because there's is a lot with with these legendary instants like how many of them are actually going to be played you have a lot of non-blocks in your deck and they have to do pretty powerful things in order to be okay with that However, the artwork on these cards is so good. Like, I'm going to want a Marvel of every Legendary Instant just to have it, right? Like, it's similar to, like, the Angels and Dust Till Dawn. Even if you don't play Prism, if you're a collector, like, having those is going to be amazing. So, the, here's the first one. Homage to Ancestors, a Mystic Instant Legendary. You only can have one in your deck. It's a blue pitch that will then make Chi when it transcends, and it says gain a life. So, you play it for zero cost, gain a life, and if you've played another blue card this turn transcend so not crazy playable in my opinion uh it's a lot of hoop like you have a little bit of hoops to jump through just to make some chi and gain a life i don't know if that's worth it however the artwork i mean look at this i mean th this you can't you can't deny how amazing this art is right now and i'm loving every second of it so we have that uh and then we have um i forgot the actual name of this card it's only come out in the japanese version so far um i think it's the path well traveled it's i'm pretty sure it's the way it is uh but don't quote me on that if i'm wrong let me know in the comments down below it's a mystic instant uh it's legendary just like all the other ones and it says if you played a blue card this turn transcend just like all the other ones uh, i'm just translating it for you and then it says uh at instant speed target attack gains go again so if you've played a blue card this turn you can play this and well you don't need the, tar the effect will come into play regardless but if you want to transcend it's a have to play another blue card but you're able to get a give a target attack go again at instant speed i think this is probably the second most playable card this card's pretty good um able to give something go again at instant speed make the chi and then put the blue back in your hand right um what i thought was zen specifically is let's say you have a combo piece but you don't have the starter uh and you have like the second combo piece you can literally play this uh play this play the attack then play this at instant speed giving the attack go again um and let's say the card's a blue like even the the card the combo card you're playing uh give it go again transcend it put it back into your hand activate zen's ability go get the next part of the combo line you also create a crouching tiger and you're able to now go off to the races a little bit so it's pretty nice um i think this is one of the more playable cards the artwork is amazing too i like i said i want every single one of these uh legendaries uh at marvel just to have them whether i play them or not absolutely amazing let me know in the comments down below what y'all think of these two but We'll get right into it. So this is putting Tom's game against Shannon. Um, and I just want to say, if you want to know how to play this hero, if you want to know how to play Katsu correctly, there's a lot of great Katsu players out there, right? There truly is a lot of great Katsu players out there. But if you want to know how to play Katsu correctly, watch Pudding's games. If you go to day two of the, he has two games on stream. The one is Prism. And the other one's a short game against Jeremiah, where he actually ends up dishonoring the Jeremiah, which is pretty nuts. And then he plays the final against Brody, which he ends up losing in the final. But Brody absolutely, like, high rolled. And I don't mean any discredit to Brody. It's just Brody literally turned zero uh, uh, red in the ledger dominated for eight and then proceeded to play Remorseless for 17. And that game still was a single-digit game, uh, but he ended up bringing it back a little bit. But regardless, this game... Prism right now, I'd say it's a solid 50-50 matchup. It it's, it's, can be very difficult for the Katsu. If Prism can get so early, really get Erudition out, and then do the flip combo, uh, can really just destroy you. But you also have the ability to just take tempo when she draws a handful of non-blocks and is unable to uh, to really block you out. So both, both sides have the ability to really um, kind of go off to the races. And then honestly in this matchup i would think you want to go first uh yeah you want them to go first so you can block out 
Um, hopefully they don't have two seven powers, but even if they do, if you can draw some three blocks, it's fine. So in this first turn, um, Chanin ends up going first. He has a Light of Soul, a Herald of Triumph, and then a War Tune Herald, and then a blue, I think, a blue Herald of Protection. So he plays a Herald of Triumph first, pitching the Light of Soul. So in this situation, it kind of sucks for putting RA because uh, he is uh, Chan's going to get Soul right off the bat just by pitching. Um, and so he already has Soul, so now he can go get a Figment without putting even block it. But he also has a Pop right in. He has a Command and Conquer, but he, uh, Chan just played a Herald of Triumph. So Pudding's kind of in a bad spot here. Can't pop it. He has to block it out. Luckily, it's only for six, um, I believe. So Pudding's now going to read like what Archangel of War does. Um, I'm actually very surprised that he got War first here. I think... I don't think uh, uh, he was planning... Like, if you're... It's to me... So this is this is the first turn. And I, can't, I, can't, I haven't spoken with Pudding, so I don't know if this is 100% accurate. But if... A prism gets so early like this and doesn't go get air addition. To me, that tells me they're wanting to play the last card in their hand. They're wanting to play the last card in their hand, no matter what, um, because they're not going to get the ponder token, right? So putting reads a card, does a shuffle, all that good stuff. I might speed up a little bit. So if you see putting's hand, he has a bonds of ancestry, a blue woman gust wave, a surging strike, and a command and conquer. So his thought process here is he will block this out, don't let it hit, uh, with the bonds and whelming, makes complete sense. And then what he's expecting is Chanin to potentially attack with the second, whatever the second Herald is in his hand, and then he'll pop that with the Command and Conquer. However, Chanin immediately uh, flips the Figment and attacks with it, and he pitches for it. So he pitches a blue, so he has one floating. So here's where Pudding makes a mistake, and this is not me sharpshooting Pudding's play at all. Anyone can make this mistake. So. Shannon plays uh, out uh, Bologna for four with one floating with go again. So putting his thought is, oh, okay, he didn't go get air addition. So he's not trying to like play out his whole hand because he doesn't care about the ponder token, right? Um, he's probably just going to swing with Bologna and then Arsenal his last card. What's in Pudding's hand is a command and conquer and a surging strike. So Pudding's thought process here is block conserve all life you can in this matchup block with the command and conquer because what he wants to do is only have a surging strike left in hand and then draw up with his best starter and potentially draw into the natural combo line and do really well the issue with this is it's a 50 50 shot really it's not really the wrong play he just made one side of the 50 50 and got burnt for it which is he's going to block with command and conquer here hoping or thinking that since Shannon flipped here he's not going to go get air addition there's no point and that this is a two cost hit uh, Harold, that's his thought process. But what you might want to play around in this situation is a War Tune Harold, right? But if he doesn't block with this Command and Conquer and Channon just arsenals, which I think Channon would have done, I think if he takes four here, Channon doesn't swing War Tune. That's my guess. But since he blocked with a popper, you can look at Channon's face. He, he's like, "What? Hold up, do you have two poppers in hand?" Like, do I risk this? Does he have two poppers? Um, because it doesn't make sense to block an angel at that. So Channon go ahead and says, well, you know what? I'm going to take the chance. I'm sure that Channon's thought process here was he's probably trying to keep one card in hand that's a really good card. that he's, So now he's just trying to filter so he can have the natural combo line. I'm going to throw out the war tune. So he throws out a war tune for five. And the problem with putting card is he has a surging strike. So he can't even... He can't even block with breaking skills and breeze rider boots if he wanted to, to with a three block to, to stop this. And even putting like, ah, crap. You know what I mean? And so again, it's not it's not necessarily the wrong play whatsoever. I think if Pudding doesn't block here, I think Chan just arsenals anyway. I don't think he throws out this war tune because you could tell Chan had to rethink what he wanted to do once Pudding blocked with that popper. Um, so Chan's basically saying, I'm gonna make you have two poppers in your hand, right? Um, so Pudding gets a little burnt here, which sucks. You can tell he's not happy about it. Uh, it's super unfortunate because you want to keep Prism off soul. That is the name of the game in this matchup. If you can sculpt the hand, apply pressure, pressure their life total, but also keep them off soul or keep them to just one soul to where they can't flip and attack um, at the start of their turn, then it's really good. So he ends up blocking a certain strike because at this point you do got to conserve life. Uh, they're going to get the soul regardless. He might as well save a little bit of life. Um, 
So super unfortunate for Channon, or not Channon, putting, and then Channon goes and gets Erudition anyway, and then gets the Ponder token. But again, putting took a 50-50 shot. You could say, you could say the technical 100% correct play is you need to play around Wartoon Herald. I think I would agree there, but I can see why he did what he did. He's trying to filter as much as he can and keep that certain strike in hand so he can go off to the races on his turn. So now you have a little bit of a problem here where Erudition is on the field, not awakened. Uh, Channon has Ward 4 on the board, which isn't too hard to get off, but it can be annoying. It basically means you have to lead with Kadachis at the start of your next turn. And what Chan can do, if he can somehow get soul, like with soul shield or any other type of thing, he's going to be able to start with his erudition flip turn. So now in Pudding's mind, what he's got to do is he's got to, one, kill Bologna for sure. And two, he's got to somehow keep, he's got to keep Shannon off of soul next turn. On Shannon's next offensive turn, he's got to keep him off soul. Now, whether that's, by pressuring enough or that's by uh blocking out so here he has a be like water looks like i think that's a surging strike yeah it's a surging strike a woman gust wave dishonor so the easiest line here is kadachi for one threaten that bologna maybe make chain and block with footsteps which is really good like get rid of a card from his hand just to block it and then you throw surging strike anyway at face which is now going to hit it's going to get eaten up by the ward because Chan's not going to give up two more cards to get rid of certain strike, and then you whelming and you go off, right? So I'm assuming I'm pretty sure that's what Pudding does. Yeah, you want to make if you can make Chan get rid of an entire card just to block out this Kadachi to try to save his Bologna, you're in a really good spot. Chan ends up taking it though, and is, I think Chan made the smart play. Um, Chan's like, I'm not going to give up a whole card just to stop Bologna from dying when she's probably going to die anyway. Um, I forgot what was in Chan's hand here. I know he had a figment in hand, if I remember correctly. I've watched this game twice. I wanted to watch it again so I could really, like, talk through it. And, again, I don't know what's going on. Putting it said, I'm making assumptions here. So if you have any differences in opinion down in the comments below, please let me know. It's totally fine. So, he's, yeah, he's thinking about the, the footsteps block, which makes sense. But the problem is he doesn't know what's in Pudding's hand, and Pudding has a blue in pitch, right? It's not a yellow, right, or anything like that. Um, so Pudding could just come with an Arakadachi, and then Shannon's got to be like, okay. And you see Shannon's hand, it looks like he's got Wartoon Herald, Wartoon Herald, Figment, Angelic Wrath. So he's got two non-blocks in hand with two Wartoon Heralds. So even if he pitches, like, the Figment here, uh, to footsteps, which he might want to to cycle his hand, it's not, you know, it's not the right, it's not exactly the right thing to do. So after he realizes that, because if he gives up a non block here and then putting has like a natural combo line in hand in any sense, he's really in trouble because he has two, another non block and two cards he doesn't want to block with, which is War Tunes to keep his pressure. So he ends up letting Bologna go and just eating up the Kadachi. Um, and seeing now what Pudding wants to do. Now, that that's really good for Pudding's side because now Pudding doesn't have to waste that surging strike on the Angel. It's really good for us, but it made sense why Channon didn't, um, as a Katsu player, it's really good for us. But it makes sense why Channon didn't block with it. Having two non-blocks in hand sucks uh, on the Prism side, and that's why on the Katsu side, you keep them off soul and you keep them pressured because they're going to draw into a hand like this. Um, so he takes it. With two non-blocks in hand, you can't block this. Like, they're... Chan just has to hope that Pudding doesn't hit him too hard here. Um, and with Pudding having a be like water in his uh, hand, he's probably going to go get a Bonds here. And what you're doing here, so what, what Pudding's doing, one, he's just playing the natural combo line. Makes sense to do whelming into Bonds, right? But also, when you're on the Lynx plan specifically, me, I still run Masculine Momentum into Prism for this very reason. Um, your first really good turn, they can just stunt. Now, you want them in this situation. So so for anyone that's not aware, Prism has a figment called Figment of Judgment, which says when it comes on the field, you flip a card and banish stone face down. So it's good against Katsu to get rid of their Katsu trigger uh, card. It's good against Levi to get rid of a key blood debt piece. Um, it can be good against Vincent, uh, all types of stuff like that. So... Pudding goes ahead, does the play line that any Katsu is going to do, which is go get Bonds. And when he does that, uh, Shannon now has to think, okay, 
do I play fig? Do I? I can stop putting his turn completely here. He'll draw a card, but unless he draws a natural combo line, the turn's pretty much over. He's just going to arsenal it, um, and I can get rid of his bonds of necessity because Chainin basically by going by getting rid of that one card in soul, he can essentially nullify eight damage. Is the way it is because uh, he can nullify the bonds, which then nullifies the bonds target from grave, which can be a fluster or whatever's in grave right now. Right now, there's no fluster in grave. Right now, there's only a bonds and another whelming. So the only thing putting him would do is go get, I think, another. Uh, no, he has a dishonor. He blocked a dishonor. No, he didn't. He did. So putting probably wouldn't even do anything with bonds here. Um, but it does nullify another eight damage. But the good thing for us is what we're trying to do as a Katsu player in this matchup, especially when you're on Pouncing Links, is you are trying to bait out two figments specifically. The first figment you're trying to bait out any day of the week is Figment of Judgment. We want that card out of the play, out of the ability to happen, because what it does is it really makes our links turn really freaking weird. Because if we links a really good card like Dishonor or you know the if we're doing like some like connector piece like yellow welling gust wave or yellow descendant they can use judgment to halt our links turn which is really bad uh the other figment we're trying to get out is figment of uh triumph which is the one about the poppers we don't care as much about that uh but that one's a little bit weird as well um and then the final figment you have to play around is figment of ravages you can't attack directly into an angel while figment of ravages is still in the deck because if they have soul, they can pop their own angel and end your turn. However, this is, is good for us. Like, Pudding's just doing his natural line. He doesn't care what happens here, really. He really doesn't. Like, he wants to play the Bonds out. But if Bonds gets flipped, it does. it's actually really good for us. Because Chandler's going to use an entire card to go get a Figment or use Halo. So he's not going to use an entire card. He's going to pop Halo, which is really good for us. And he's going to get rid of one of his soul just to stop this bonds and that frees up our links turn and makes it a, lo a lot easier to play around so and we're still probably going to draw a card right um potentially if we want to break in scales but i don't think uh pudding does that here but i don't think he flips here so it doesn't matter so Shannon thinks about it for a while he goes ahead and pitches his figment which is good this pi this figment essentially is acting as a four block it does use up his his helmet his halo um, but the card replaces itself, essentially, uh, and he's able to stop that bonds. But again, this is fine. This helps your links play, uh, and it stops the Katsu turn dead in its tracks. Uh, Pudding will draw from Whelming unless he fully blocks this, but what Chan does is he just uses the one floating he has to then uh, block with footsteps, take three, and then let Pudding draw and get an arsenal. And the arsenal ends up being an enlightened strike, which is actually a pretty good arsenal. Uh, it's not too bad of an arsenal target. So now it's a little bit weird because this is the only bad thing. It it adds to soul. So now technically Chandler can start with Erudition here. Or not Chandler, Channon. This is where I think Channon makes a misplay, in my opinion. I am not a prison player by any means. So if you're a prison player in the comments, let me know. With two soul here, you just you start you play out a herald to give it go again like a triumph and then you activate erudition and give it go again and draw two right that's i think that's what should have happened here or no i'm sorry that's that is what happened here but what i what i would have done to start is i would have just played uh erudition just flip erudition for two right now and then pay two for it. So pay the Angelic Wrath to flip. So we'll go through the full play first. What he does first is he Goliath Gauntlets into Blue Triumph. Basically, he's wanting Herald of Triumph Blue to be harder to block as a seven. So it's going to take two, three blocks from putting and a piece of equipment, which then frees up potentially a Herald Air Edition later. Um, I don't know if I agree with this. Like you want to say that Goliath Gauntlet for Herald Air Edition, especially against a Katsu. Um, because in this situation, you have two cards left in hand. Like, unless it's a seven, uh, it doesn't like it doesn't affect the Katsu that much. So putting blocks it out with a whelming and an ancestral empowerment, a blue whelming. And so, and you see that Chan's pitched an angelic wrath. So we know good and well that either Chan had two angelic, and we saw him pitch a figment last turn. So either Chan has two angelic wraths in hand, or He's really trying to be patient with the Erudition play and set up for later. 
So putting blocking this out with the Art of War in hand makes complete sense. You would E-Strike for seven. Arsenal, your Art of War, have a nice day. If Shannon attacks with another uh, six or seven power, then we have to think about what we want to do. But right now, the name of the game for putting is keep Shannon off soul. So what Shannon's going to do here is he's going to activate Prism's ability, paying two resources, still floating one, activate air addition, and then attack with air addition, not flowing anything, and use his last soul to draw two cards, which is, again, really good for us because now we can let this hit and then block out that last attack if we can and then kill air addition next turn, and then all of a sudden he has zero soul, no air addition, and we're playing a little bit fair of a game, and we're still up, like, at that point, six life. So we're in a really good spot. So what, and then what Chan does is he plays, he draws into a Herald of Tenacity, which is really good for him because it has Dominate, right? What I would have done in this play if I was Chan in is you look at his pitch. He has a yellow Angelic Wrath, a blue Herald Triumph, a red War Tune, and a Merciful, which he drew into. So what his hand was to start was yellow Angelic Wrath, blue Triumph, red War Tune, uh, blue Triumph. So he had two blues, a yellow, and a red. What I would have done is just pitch the uh, Angelic Raft to activate Air Edition immediately, pitch the blue Triumph, the same way he's pitching right now, to then play Air Edition, drawing two cards. Yes, you have no soul, but it is what it is. He still would have had the blue Triumph and the blue War Tune in hand, and then he would have drawn to Merciful and Tenacity. So his, his hand, if he would have attacked with Air Edition first, his hand would have been Merciful Retribution, Red War Tune, Yellow Tenacity, and then blue triumph he would have been able to go air edition into war tune herald if he wanted to um pitching his blue and it would have going because the angelic wrath is the first card in pitch and then he would have been able to do a tenacity and what that would have done is yes he would have expended both soul but then pudding would have been forced to try to block out two angels at the back end after taking four damage and it just would have been a lot i think it would have been a lot more efficient Regardless, this makes it really difficult for Pudding because Pudding's in a weird position here, right? Shannon has zero soul now. So if Pudding can block this out and then kill Air Edition next turn, he's in a really good spot because now you just got rid of Prism's biggest power piece against you other than maybe a Figment of Protection. Uh, so if I'm Pudding here, yes, you block this. And the crappy thing is you have two options here. You actually have one option. You block with Pouncing Links. Or you block with Tunic and Breaking Scales. Um, because he has Art of War in his deck, you you actually, in this situation, would value your Tunic over your Bouncing Links. So he ends up making the balls he play. And he does it. He blocks with Pouncing Links here. And he keeps Shannon off of Soul, which is really good for Shannon. But what he's going to do here now is he's just going to arsenal. He's going to uh, E-Strike for five into Air Edition. And then he's going to um, draw a card, I think. And that's about it. So now he's in a good spot. Now, now he can care a little bit less about Shannon making um, Soul. And he draws into 100 wins, which is a good starter. So now... Again, we're up six life. Prism has zero soul. Air edition's gone. The figment of judgment, you know, gotcha play is gone. His halo is gone. We're in a really good spot. So now there, we have windows where we don't have to care about them getting their prism ability. The last figment they have that really matters if they can get a lot of soul is figment of protection. Because if they stack spectral shields, then it's not in a good spot, right? So he pitches figment of rebirth to play this. Um... This triumph and now putting so putting's now as you can see that's why he's reading this this he's saying okay if i let this hit what ability are you going to get with this angel right i don't know what putting's hand is it looks like yellow bonds of ancestry he has a hundred wins in arsenal he has an art of war in hand he's going to be on tunic next turn and he has a lord of wind so yeah block this out hopefully they don't have another one to swing at you um because if they don't you hundred wins you Kadachi Kadachi 100 wins, and then you arsenal your Art of War on um, Tunic, which is really, really good, which is exactly what happened. He played for his outs there. He blocked there, and 
That's what I want to show you here. That's the patience, right? That is the patience of a good Katsu player because he blocks with two bonds on Ancestry. He doesn't have that good of a hand. He has bonds, 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 Lord of Wind, Art of War. Not a good Art of War hand, even on 100 wins. But some Katsus would say, take six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play 100 wins next turn. I'm going to tick up my tunic. It's going to be a three. I'm going to play 100 wins. I'm going to play Art of War on 100 wins. I'm going to banish one of my bonds and i'm gonna go try to you know draw into the natural combo line like some katsus would take that chance I'm not saying all katsus some katsus would take that chance but no pudding's like you know what no i'm good i'm gonna manage your soul i'm gonna make you not have soul and i'm gonna get my art of war and arsenal and work for my power turn especially without pouncing links he has to do that so the play line here is karachi karachi 100 wins or he starts with 100 wins just to maybe try to force out a card block um, because if he Kadachi Kadachi's first, then it creates a weird um, situation where Channing can really understand like more information. Because here, Chan's like, okay, what does he have in his hand? Right? Does he have ancestral? Does he have? Does he have a blue, a surging, and a zero cost? And now I'm going to give him the combo line. Like you don't know. But if putting leads with Kadachi Kadachi 100 wins, he only has two cards in hand, and Channing pretty much knows, like, okay, there's a limited amount of things he can do into this. So Chan ends up soul shielding it, which, again, is really good. It's going to go soul, and that sucks. But uh, Pudding just got two cards from hand for a 100 wins. And now he can Karachi, Karachi, and he can Arsenal his Art of War on Tunic. He's in a very good spot. Very good spot. And Chan doesn't know what's coming up. So there's, yeah, there's a chance for Chan does that. Now he had the that all you got, which really helped Chan in um, a little bit. But our, also, side note, Arclight Sentinel, I don't know if that's correct in the Katsu. Any prison players out there, I would not run Arclight into me. All you're going to do is Arc, because like your best case scenario most time on an Arclight is like I Art of War and you play Arclight in response, but it takes pretty much your whole hand to do it. And then now you. You know, you just reset the turns, but I still have tempo. So Chan draws a new Herald of Air Edition. Very, very good. The problem with Air Edition here is you don't have Goliath Gauntlet. Using that Goliath Gauntlet on the blue Triumph, I think, was a misplay. But these guys have been playing all day, right? You can't be too sharpshooty here. You can't go too nutty because, like, these guys have been playing, you know, eight rounds of Flesh and Blood. You're going to make mistakes. So here is such a fun line. So Air Edition, there's no way to block this out unless you block breaking skills and tunic no you just use your art of war and defense a lot of people wouldn't do this because they want to use their art of war and offense but he art of wars in response in the layer step and then he's going to use a surging strike as a popper which is absolutely brilliant and then he blocks the surging strike for six popping it which is awesome absolutely awesome doesn't have to use his equipment to block he just now he has a yes he doesn't get to use his art of war which does suck but he does have a four card hand Prism, you know, has to draw back up. He has a seven life lead and he's able to like, you know, have a little tempo and potentially take control of the game. Really, really cool plays out of Pudding. So Pudding has two red descendants here. Um, I forgot the last card, two cards in his hand, but he has two red descendants here. Uh, ancestral empowerment and a, and a fluster. So your only play line here is pitch descendant to play descendant. Prism very rarely is going to overblock, if ever. Uh, the only time they overblock is Soul Shield. They're not going to block with a card and block with Footsteps because that's going to expend two cards from their hand to do that. There's, they're never going to do that. Unless they're running Sinks and Fates, but Prism nowadays aren't doing that at all. Old Prisms used to do that a little bit, I think. And he has an Arc Light in hand. So this is a situation where the Prism could Arc Light here. But the problem with arc light in here, like laying this hit in arc light, is that you just basically time walk both people and they starts back up again. Because the arc lights here, putting attacks with Kadachi, Arsenal's a card, and then they both draw, and then he draws up. He might have one card left in hand if he had two blues, and then the Katsu now has a five card hand, right? So it doesn't. That's the problem with arc light against Katsu is it doesn't time walk them enough. Like you have to have insane tempo against Akatsu to where they care. And now, since we got rid of Figment of Judgment, um, 
Pudding has complete freedom in what he wants to go get because Figment of Judgment can't do the gotcha play. So decent play here. What Pudding's thought is, is if, if Chan just says no blocks, no blocks, no blocks, Pudding's just going to arsenal the, the Ancestral Empowerment because it's such a key piece. It's not worth ever using that card. But this is where I like Mask of Momentum, right? Like, Shannon, maybe he wouldn't respect it, but this is where he kind of has to respect it because you draw for Mask and you keep going, right? And you can really pressure your life total. I still would prefer, I still would run Mask of Momentum in the Prism. I don't think Lynx is good enough. I think really good Prisms can really punish you for playing Lynx if you don't, if the things don't line up properly. But hey, it it's the best Katsu player in the world, arguably, so can't really say much. Um... So he has Ancestral in his hand. And so you have to really evaluate your hands when you see stuff like this. Like, do you take this? You know, what can... So what Pudding's probably thinking, again, I haven't talked to Pudding specifically turn by turn, is what can Prism go get? You know, I'm at the point now where I have a 17 life lead, very big. You know, I've gotten... I've kept him off soul other than this one soul. The only figment he can go get is protection. He can swing protection and he'll get three... Uh, spectral shields by the end of his turn, which is really big, but that's literally the biggest threat that he can do is just put a bunch of war on the board, which is very good, but is it worth blocking? Especially since he probably has another Herald coming. Like, is it worth it here, or do I just eat up his, his Herald of Protection stuff and let him hit? So he lets it hit here. I think it's a smart play as well. I don't know exactly what's in Pudding's hand. I see a standing order. Okay, so he was trying to standing order. I love the standing order tech, by the way. It's awesome. It's basically like a mini enlightened strike in Katsu. Not quite as good. It's like a bad enlightened strike. I did ask Pudding about that. So I asked Pudding three questions. I asked him, what, how do you think about, how did Psycho and Roundhouse feel? Because he has that in the sideboard. He said it felt pretty good. He could replace it, but it felt good. Um, and they asked him about staying order. And he said staying order is basically, he doesn't, he doesn't mainly run it because it's a popper. He mainly runs it because it's basically like a worse enlightened strike, but it's also zero cost, right? Like it's able to be used as a popper. It can attack for five, filtering your arsenal, which is also really good sometimes. Um, and it blocks five potentially, and it's a three block normally. So like it's just like a like a slightly worse enlightened strike. So Shannon pitches the Herald of Protect, uh, Herald of Erudition here, which I thought was very interesting. Like, I feel like you would pitch. I guess he had to have a choice either way, right? He could have pitched potentially the that all you got, but it was yeah, his pitch just didn't line up. He couldn't play the Erudition, which sucks. He couldn't play the Erudition and the Protection. So now the Prism's in a pretty good spot, right? Uh, Katsu's going to take this. Like, there's. I, there's not, in my opinion, much reason you block this. I think Pudding does, which is surprising. But I don't think you block this as a Katsu. Like, you already just took 11. Like, if you block this, you really are... And you have to get through Ward 7 on their turn, which basically means you're not going to have a turn next turn. Like, I think you just have to, to take this. And especially if his hand is Red Hunter wins, Red Hunter wins, standing order, dishonor. So he was hoping that it wouldn't be a Herald of Triumph so he could standing order and pop it. Um, but it isn't. And his hand blocks horribly. He's going to have to give up standing order, dishonor, and his breaking skills to block this out. Yeah, you could tell it's a hard, hard decision. But he doesn't want to give Prism soul because if he blocks this out, Prism has zero soul going in the next turn. I think you take this though, personally. I don't remember what Pudding does here. Yeah, he ends up taking it. It sucks. You don't want to take this, but your hand is much more usable offensively. You have to get rid of that war on the board. And now, since protection is out, we no longer care about any her any 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 angel that gets out, um, other than the fact that it's ward and it's annoying to get through. But as far as the effects. Like, Rebirth is nice to go get an Erudition or go get a Triumph or something, but that's about it. And Shannon keeps getting card. If you notice, like, on the Rebirth trigger, he doesn't go get Erudition. He go gets Triumph. He's like, you're not going to pop me. I'm not going to give you a chance. I'm going to make you block me fairly every single turn, which I think is actually a really smart play. So we got to get through Ward freaking 7 here, right? So 
honestly, leading with a Kadachi makes the most sense. If you lead with 100 wins, he's just going to eat it with all his spectral shields. He might block with footsteps just to make sure you can't scales it. And then you're in a weird spot. I think getting rid of one spectral shield here is the best play. Because then it prevents him from being able to footsteps block you. He ends up Kadachi again. So he's trying to get rid of the spectral shields first. So now... By getting rid of those two spectral shields before 100 wins in, it puts Chan in a really weird spot. Channing can't just Phantasmal Footstep block him now um, and not eat up his Angel. He has to actually, like, full block. And he can has to block with a block three here, and uh, then Pudding's going to come in with a four anyway, which will eat up both. So he's going to he's going to take at least one card from Chan's hand and kill everything, which is pretty good. So Chan ends up actually taking like the hit through his angel to block all of the 100 wins out, which does like change what Pudding was expecting. I think Pudding was expecting Chan in the 3 block that and maybe force him to try breaking skills and then just kill a spectral shield anyway, but he didn't do that. And so we know Putin has a standing order in hand and an arsenal. I forgot what he had. So Chan's just making sure with one resource flowing, he can't get got here because there is a possibility that the Katsu has a bonds of ancestry and arsenal and a zero cost. And he can discard that play descendant play bonds. And then, yeah, that's exactly what probably Chan's thinking here. So he says no blocks here. This is smart from from putting. Maybe he gets a. Uh, he can go get another combo card with Go again, and then play Standing Order. I don't remember what Pudding does here. The reason he's playing Ancestral is again maybe try to go wide. This this game is very close. Pudding hasn't dealt hardly any damage this turn. The, the life tolls are even. You haven't taken a card from the Prism's hand. Like you need to Ancestral here to one push damage. And two, and with this, now you put Shannon in the weird spot with one soul of spinning two to block out this 100 wins. Because if he spins two to block out the 100 wins and flips an angel, he'll block the whole entire 100 wins. But it takes a card from his hand and an, and an angel off the board. So he ends up doing it. Um, blocking out the entire 100 wins. And he ends up staying over for four. So we just took a card from his hand, which is nice. Um, we didn't deal any damage, though. We only dealt three damage. So we took a card from his hand and dealt three damage, and we got through all seven wards. So now, going into this next turn, since he only has three cards, our goal here is just to block this first attack. Don't let this first attack hit um, because if we, he can't attack again after this, if we block this out, uh, because, especially since he pitched to yellow, he doesn't have any way of like giving us another attack. So you block this out immediately. It's not even a thought. Um, Pudding's hand is, looks like Lord of Wind, Art of War, Bonds of Ancestry, Whelming. I'm not sure what's in his arsenal at this point, but I think you it sucks be a block with Whelming. Ugh. It's a good offensive hand, but it doesn't have a starter is the problem. I don't know what's in his arsenal. <laughs> Excuse me. Box with the bonds. Oh, flick flack. Nice. Oh, this is the turn where he gets got. Like... There's nothing you can do about that. Absolutely nothing. It's so annoying. But when the Prism's got, the Prism's got. The good thing is there's nothing Prism can do with this. Like, they can't swing a, a Angel. Uh, they could flip here to get some war on the board, but they're not going to. So, Pudding made the right play. He just got unlucky. He did go get Ravages, though, which also helps us because now that Ravages is on the board, we don't have to uh, 
worry about not attacking into an angel. Now we can, because the way the angels work is if you attack into the hero and the angel eats it, it doesn't count as a hit because they prevent the damage. But if you attack into an angel, it does count as a hit because you're hitting the angel. They can't prevent their own like damage on themselves type thing. So he awakens rebirth just to get the ward off, which makes complete sense. So now, now Pudding's goal is here is just can I, is to get rid of this ward. So he draws into what looks like an arc light. This is why arc light is, in my opinion, very bad in Akatsu. Um, it creates these really weird situations. So he ends up arc lighting here. Uh, and blocking with the footsteps. So he's going to keep his rebirth on board, which is very nice. Um, three, five, seven. Yep. And then footsteps. So he blocks out the Kadachi, and the second Kadachi has to go in Arc Light. So he basically keeps rebirth alive. But again, as a prism, the problem here is you just time walked yourself, and you basically now gave, you're in the exact same situation you were the turn before. But now the Katsu has a five card hand. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really do anything. It's a crappy thing in this situation. But it was the only out that the Prism had. I'm not saying the, the play that Prism made was wrong. I'm saying the arc light in that situation makes it very hard. So he has a yellow wall man hand. Uh, what else has he got? A surgeon strike. Oh, a red wall man and a... Uh, so this is where, because... Um, because Channon brought out Herald of Ravages or the Figment of Ravages, now he can put in has a couple of cool options here. He can play a surging out, which is going to be over top of the rebirth. So now he puts Channon in a really weird spot of you have to block this with footsteps and let the angel eat it for it not to hit, which now you're taking a card from hand, right? Now you're taking a card from hand, and I'm still like, I'm still going to have other attacks. Um, but he does prevent it, and then you can attack with whelming. If you do block this out, I'm just gonna whelming into rebirth and draw. So he ends up soul shielding to get over to get to play around ancestral. So in this situation, don't ancestral here, obviously. Since Ravages is on the board, now you can just play Whelming Gust Wave into Rebirth. Now we just got rid of two cards from hand. So our goal here is to Whelming Gust Wave into Rebirth, drawing a card, and then also draw a card from Ancestral. And then now we can threaten like eight plus damage. And the Prism only has two cards in hand. So it's a really good spot. Actually, no. Oh, see, here, I wonder why he does this. I'm assuming it's because he wants to see what he draws into. Because then, okay, this makes sense. Because if you if you don't ancestral here, and you ancestral on whelming, you're literally blind ancestraling, hoping you draw into a zero cost, right? In order to cause you trigger, even off the rebirth, which makes sense. Oh no, never mind. This was the art of war play. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Draws two, makes it go to seven, which now forces Channon to use his rapture. And now his whelming is gonna come in for plus one. And now also, if he drew into a zero cost, now he can just put whelming at rebirth at base and not have to worry that it, you know he can go get bonds and then go off to the races here. So Chan ends up activating Rapture on his one floating to block out the surging, which is 100% the correct play. So now as putting, if you drew into a zero cost, now you simply just whelming into rebirth, guarantee the on hit, draw the card and guarantee the Katsu trigger. Um, and then you attack for minimum 10 more damage this turn when Chanin only has two cards in hand. Let's see what his hand was. So he has Warmonger's Diplomacy. What is that? Winds of Eternity and, and Whelming. So, yeah, you play this, you discard the Warmongers, you go get Bonds, you play Bonds, you you can still Kadachi, Kadachi, and then you play out a Fluster Fist if you want to. So he ends up doing that. 
he's checking his grave to see what his sequencing is going to be post whelming. So he ends up whelming at rebirth to guarantee the on hit, which I think is correct. Some people might want to like try to play whelming for five go again on hit draw card into the prism. But if they just footsteps and they eat it up and then now you got no cost, you trigger, no nothing. And since he only has a warmongers and a winds of attorney in hand, he can't do that. If he would have had a better attack in hand that he could boots like fluster or something, then maybe you could consider going face and forcing another card out of the prism's hand. But yeah, it's kind of crappy. So he goes and gets a McGinchy, which is so, so, so cool. I love this so much. I love this so much. Because he has a lot of targets engraved. McGinchy is more damage, um, or it's equal on damage as Bonds is going to be. It's going to be, or it's actually going to be one more damage than Bonds would be. Um, and he's going to be able to pay for Lord of Wind. And there's no way the prism blocks this out because he, unless the prism has a blue and a soul shield, there's literally no way the prism blocks this out because the prism gets to throw six in front of it. He breaking skills. It doesn't matter. So he blocks three here just to conserve some health. That's why putting also was checking his grave. He's checking how many targets he had. And he ends up going and getting one, two, three, four, five, six, six targets, which then pumps the Lord of Wind up by six, up to eight, plus the Art of War is nine. So he attacks the Lord of Wind for nine to win the game. Absolutely unreal game. Um, like, the, again, this game showed, and you see Pudding's happy about that one. Uh, this game shows how patient you can be as a katsu and play properly keep the prism off soul keep them from the inability of doing their combo turn wait for your windows and just go and pudding had a lot of unfortunate things happen this game he had the turn one popper mess up uh that honestly wasn't a misplay on his end he just didn't play around the war tune um but it's not like the end of the world then he had to give up mask of pouncing links on turn two to herald of tenacity or turn three so, like, he had to do a lot in order to win this game. Uh, plays that if you told people, he probably they probably think he doesn't win the game. So, insane. Loved it. Um, definitely go watch this game over again. Go watch his game. He plays against the Jeremiah in the same stream. And then even though he gets a little bit high rolled against Brody, go watch that because at least it shows you, like, how you try to battle back even in a game where you're probably going to lose. Um, really, really good stuff. But, yeah. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. I just wanted to showcase Pudding because literally, I'll put his Twitter down below. Arguably the best Katsu player in the world. Definitely go give him a shout out. Uh, go give him some love. He deserves it. Uh, hopefully we see him again at the top stages. But yeah, thank you all so much. Um, and I'll see you all next time on TC Talk.